Hi, I'm Jake, and in this video we'll be showing you how we can use motion capture to control our computer. With this system we have an infrared array featuring 130 LEDs, and in the array we have placed a standard Y-mote. Okay, this one array is placed to the side. Above the display we also have a second array and Y-mote which looks down on the display, and this gives us our X and Y axis tracking. And these arrays are powered by a standard power supply. To reflect the infrared light we will be using some simple reflective tape designed to be worn when bike riding. Using these small tokens we can easily calibrate the camera to the display. By placing a token in opposite diagonals of the screen the system can automatically detect the bounds of the display and adjust the input accordingly. We must also calibrate a fresh hold, which is a high certain height above the display, and we do this by holding a token at the height we wish the fresh hold to be, and that's that calibrated, simple as that and the system is now ready to go. Here I've made two rings out of reflective material and put them on my fingers. This allows the sensor to track my hand position and move the cursor accordingly. So as you can see as I move my hand the cursor follows it and remains underneath my right finger. The algorithm used for tracking is very simple, it simply takes the rightmost point and the leftmost point is used for clicking, which I shall demonstrate later. So here is a clicking gesture, and by dragging out a box I can create a file explorer window. And I can navigate through these folders and files as I would do explorer. I just simply use the clicking gesture to open the folder. So I'll just do that now. There we are. And here we have a couple of videos. And you'll see the menus popping up and disappearing here. Now this is where the threshold comes in. Uh, the idea is the menus are actually floating in the air. So when your hand's down low you can manipulate data. No menus in the way. Click, click, click. But when you raise your hand the menus appear. There we have a uh, move, close, uh, resize and we also have a back button for going up a level and we can simply click on these buttons and we can resize our windows and also move them around or completely close them if we wish. Now this is very good because it means we can have nice big buttons which totally obscure the display I mean, we can't see any files here, but it doesn't really matter because when we put our hand down low, the menus aren't there anymore. I found this was a very elegant solution for utilising the full 3D tracking rather than just using 2D. Hmm. We can drag out as many boxes as we wish. There's a second box and it has the same menu on it. So we can stack them up, move them around, organise them however we wish to arrange files. So I've shown how we can manipulate the folders and move them around, but what we can also do is actually drag files out of a folder and place them on the desktop, like so. And this is allows us to actually look at the files and we can manipulate them in exactly the same way as we do folders with a menu that floats above it. So here we can see the video and if we lift our hand there is our video menu as well as the standard resize, move and close. We also have play and pause buttons and volume up and volume down buttons. So there we've paused the video and let's just continue it. And we also turn the volume right up. don't know if you can hear it and we can turn the volume down again and let's just move that video over to there and we'll stretch it out a bit make it nice and big to cover a lot more of the display 
and let's play the video again and there we have it running and as with the folders when we put our hand down the display is completely clear of menus the entire folder can be used we can also drag another box out and arrange our desk however we like so we can have folders and files strewn all over it as we would with a real paper desk so let's drag this other video and place it over there Right about there. So here we have a second video. And we can stack up our files if we want. Uh, you can pretty much do anything you would with a paper desk. So you can stack the folders up, drag folders out of files onto your desk, array files around to look at. The file management and finger tracking components are both completely separate of each other so this means that we can actually use the finger tracking in any application which supports a mouse as the finger tracking component simply simulates mouse input so as far as the computer is concerned it's just getting input from a standard mouse. Okay. This does present a problem for Z axis up and down and this is actually sent to the computer through the simulation of a certain key press which is actually control shift and F6 so if you wish to develop an application which uses the 3D tracking you can use control you can use detection of control shift and F6 to determine when the user's hand has crossed the threshold ah, so here we are browsing the internet ah, let's see uh, you can work all the scroll bars at the side and just do anything we could with a mouse really. It's a very, what's the word for it, flexible system. You could do anything you can imagine with it. There's one, for instance, alternate way of using this system by placing one token on my hand and just sitting a token at the side of the monitor. I can actually use the system without having to move my fingers. By covering the token on the left with my hand I can simulate a click and the mouse simply follows my right hand. So if you had some problem with your finger mobility and say you couldn't use a mouse, this system would actually allow you to interact with the computer. It's a system, there's a huge scope for development. You can do just about anything you can imagine. It's a very new field, so it's very, very open to any radical ideas you might have. There's not a huge amount being done with it, I found, just simply because it's only recently that these systems have become affordable. I mean, uh, this system was built uh, using an idea inspired by Johnny Chung Lee, who developed the way of actually capturing the input by using a Y mote and an infrared array. Uh, the system cost me in total about forty pounds, which was because I didn't have any Y motes, so I had to buy a couple. And this project took about four months in total. And you can see I've made a huge leaps just in that small amount of time. So yeah, hopefully other people will pick up this project and continue to develop it. So I hope you've enjoyed this project and uh, that's it for me for now. Watch this space.